Hello everybody and welcome to this uh, example. In this example we are going to draw this brick wall. It's relatively tricky but if you like you can give it a try. Good luck, pause the video. If not, continue watching. We're about to start with the solution. So first of all I'm going to enable my grid. And then I'm going to draw two bricks. A big one with a width of 95 and a height of 30 and a small one with a width of 45 and a height of 30. Let's zoom in a bit and let's in ensure that our snap settings are enabled. We want to make sure that snap nodes is enabled and snap to grid is enabled. Let's give the bricks some rounding. And let's remove the stroke and let's arrange two big bricks next to each other and a bunch of small bricks and now let's draw the background And the background should have no rounding at all. And let's send the background to the back and change the color of the background to gray. So remove all the saturation. And let's change the color of these bricks. Now let's resize this background because we want the background to be exactly the right size in order for these, this tile to be seamless. So we want to leave a space of one square here and no space on the other side. And let's change, uh, let's uh, turn it into a group. And let's change the x coordinate to 0 and then go to edit clone create tiled clones. These settings should be fine and let's move the, the background to the left. And now let's go and select our bricks and press Ctrl X to cut them and let's double click on our group and press Ctrl V and let's place our bricks here. The first effect we want to add is an image effect. I'm going to add the following image brick texture And I'm going to apply the filter and here we see the result. Please note that I made sure that the height and the width of my picture have the same proportions as the height and the width of the object. If I didn't do that there would be some blank spaces either on the top or on the sides. Anyway, let's change the general filter settings. I see that the result of the filtered image is much bigger than the results of the than the size of the or original object. So let's change here the coordinates to zero and the dimensions to one. Oops, not eleven, but one. 
and let's press Ctrl 5 to refresh the rendering. And as a next step, I'm going to add a color matrix. The goal of the color matrix is to remove the red, green and blue and then to use the red value in the original to contribute to the amount of transparency. So I set this to zero. I set the green value to zero as well. And I set the blue value to zero, resulting in a black square. And I want the red value to contribute to the transparency. So the red value uh, multiplied by negative one is added to the alpha channel. So we get a result like this, a transparent object where the re most the reddest parts are the most transparent. I press Ctrl Z to put it back. And I want to add diffuse lighting next. The output of the color matrix, which was a transparent object, will be the input of my diffuse lighting. I will choose a distant light point with an elevation of 14 or 15. And I want to change the brightness of the light to be about half of this, something like that. And I want to change the surface scale also to about half, 0, 0,4, 0, 0,5, something like that. And next, I want to combine this lighting with the original, and I'm going to use composite for that. I want to have the diffuse lighting as the first input and the source graphic as the second input. And I want to use the arithmetic operator. Let's increase the K1 value to about 4. And as you can see, I have a nice brick texture on my brick. Now I've got quite a nice texture on the surface of my brick, but I would also like to elevate the whole brick with respect to the cement, with respect to the background. And in order to do this, I'm going to add a bevel. I'm going to do this by, first of all, adding a Gaussian blur. If I look at the Gaussian blur, I see that the interior of the brick is opaque. And the closer I get to the edges, the more transparent it is. Remember that I can use the transparency of an object to represent the height uh, when using diffuse lighting. But here, if we look at the edges, I see that there's a, quite a sharp cutoff and there's no gradual uh, transition to a more transparent object. So let's change the filter general settings back to how they originally were. Negative 0, 0,2, negative 0, 0,2, 1,4 and 1,4. And I see here that there's a gradual transition from opaque to transparent all along the edges. We add a diffuse lighting effect. And as input to the diffuse lighting effect, we want the output of the Gaussian blur. Let's choose a distant light with an azimuth of 240, 245. So somewhere here for, for illustration. And we want the elevation not to come directly to the side of the brick but we want the light to fall onto, on top of the surface of the brick. So let's increase the elevation to 15 degrees. So here we have our elevated brick. 
but now we want to combine this elevated brick with the textured brick and in order to do that we are going to add composite as the first input of our comp composite we want the diffuse lighting as the second input of our field of our the composite effect we want the textured brick which is created here and in order uh, and in order now what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna do arithmetic and the part where uh, both the inputs have pixels I'm going to multiply it to something like this and there we have it let's apply the same filter to these bricks as well now let's apply the same filter to the smaller bricks as I click on the apply the filter I see that it looks fine except that here on the top and the bottom we have some space that's because the aspect ratio of the image is not the same as the aspect ratio of the object the image is much longer than the object so let's not apply this filter but rather let's duplicate the filter and rename it to small brick and let's add another image click on image and click on image file and let's create a smaller brick texture here I have the aspect ratio a width of 900 by uh, compared to with a height of 600 and now let's apply the filter and we see a much better result let's apply it to all the small bricks and voila here is our result a very nice brick wall texture thanks for watching see you in the next lesson